Hello, everyone. This is Bao Yujing. I'm going to present our work, Network of Tensor Time Series. This is a joint work with my advisor, Professor Hang Hangtong from UIUC, and Dr. Ya Dazhu from IBM. Today's presentation is comprised of five components, namely introduction, preliminaries, methodology, experiments, and conclusion. Now let's move on to the introduction. Co-evolving time series is ubiquitous and has been observed in many applications such as environmental monitoring, financial analysis, and smart transportation. And each time series in the co-evolving time series is related to each other. For example, the temperature of different locations in the environmental monitoring have similar patterns. There are several properties of co-evolving time series. Let's take the environmental monitoring as an example which is shown in the left figure. Suppose we have some monitoring sites or locations, and each site has multiple types of sensors. And the time series collected by these sensors can actually be formulated as a tensor, which is shown in the middle figure. The first dimension of which is a location, the second dimension is type, and the third dimension is the time. Moreover, each temporal snapshot is also a tensor, as shown in the green slice. The values in the green slice are also connected by the networks. For example, the coefficient networks between the temperature, humidity, and the pressure, and the distance network between different sites. There are two major challenges for modeling the co-evolving time series. The first one is how to model the explicit relationships. In other words, the network constraints. In the environmental monitoring sighting, we have the location network and the type network. Existing methods are designed for flat graphs, for example, GCN. It can either capture the location network or type network, but not all. In this paper, we introduce a spectral convolution for tensor graphs and the tensor graph convolutional network. The second challenge is how to model implicit relations. Different time series might have similar patterns, for example, air temperatures of Toronto and Moscow are similar to each other. However, the explicit distance network constraint cannot capture this relation, because Moscow and Toronto are far away from each other. Existing methods are also unable to capture these implicit relations. This is because they either use the same model for all time series, or use an individual model for each time series. To solve this problem, we introduce a tensor recurrent neural network, TRNN for short, and implement RNN with LSTM. Therefore, we have TLSTM. Now let me introduce some useful concepts in preliminaries. Firstly, tensor graph. An example of the tensor graph is shown here. It is compressed of an m-dimensional tensor X, and each of its dimension is along with an adjacency matrix. Secondly, network of tensor time series. It is compressed of a tensor time series here, and each of its dimensions is also associated with an adjacency matrix. Thirdly, a mode M product between tensor X and the matrix U. It is actually a generalization of the product between matrices. Suppose we are given a tensor X and a matrix U. We first flatten the tensor X into a matrix along the mth dimension. Then we apply the matrix matrix product here. And finally, we will reshape the results back to a tensor. Now let's move on to the methodology part. This slide provides an overview of the proposed approach. The problem we're considering is that given the omega historical snapshots, we want to predict the next tall snapshots. For the first challenge, the explicit relations, we propose a novel TGCN, for the second challenge, the implicit relations, we propose a novel TRNN. Now, for an input snapshot ST, we firstly use TGCN to capture the explicit relations, and we will obtain the node embedding HT. Then, HT will be fed into TRNN to incorporate the implicit relations and temporal dynamics. YT minus 1 and YT are the hidden states of TRNN. RT is the output of the TRNN. Finally, given RT and HT, the output module will predict the values of the next temporal snapshot. In this slide, 
we will introduce a tensor graph convolutional network, or TGCN for short. We derive the updating function of TGCN by the following steps. In the first place, we have the equation of the graph Fourier transformation, x tilt equals to phi times x, where phi is the eigenvector matrix of the graph Laplacian matrix L. Firstly, we extend the graph Fourier transformation to tensor graph Fourier transformation via the mode product, as shown here, and also as illustrated here. Secondly, we define a spectral graph convolution for tensor graphs as this equation, where g m tilde are the parameter vectors, and it is illustrated here. Thirdly, we use Chebyshev polynomials to approximate the parameters, and then we will have this equation, as well as this illustration. Here, Tp is the Chebyshev polynomial with degree p. Lm tilde is the normalized Laplacian matrix. Theta p is the weight for the polynomial. Fourthly, we further simplify the equation by adding constraints similar to GCN, and we will have this equation. Finally, by adding the hidden dimension here and here, as well as the activation function sigma, we will have the final updating function for each layer. In this slide, we provide a detailed analysis about TGCN. Let m to be 2, then the tensor graph convolution can be written as this equation. In the first term, x is multiplied by both a1 and a2. In the second term, x is multiplied by a1. In the third term, x is multiplied by a2. And in the last term, x is not multiplied by any network. In summary, the tensor graph convolution can capture the synergy, and it can also capture each network separately, and it also has a self-convolution or residue connection. Here, we also provide an illustration of the synergy. Note we could gather information from W prime by firstly travel from V to V prime via the A1, and then travel from V prime to W prime via A2. Now let's move on to the tensor recurrent neural network, or TRNN. TRNN is compressed of three components: the tensor dimension reduction, the TRNN cell, and the tensor dimension reconstruction. Given the tensor HT produced by tensor GCM, the tensor dimension reduction will decompose HT into a smaller core tensor ZT via Tucker decomposition, which is illustrated here. Here, the U are orthogonal and can be trained by the backpropagation process. Then we feed the core tensor ZT to the TRNN cell to incorporate the temporal dynamics to ZT. The original RNN is unable to deal with the tensor input. We extend the RNN to TRNN by replacing the linear operations in RNN by the multilinear operations. Finally, we need to reconstruct the shape of a yt for predicting the values of the next temporal snapshot. Now, given the output of a TRN cell, the yt, we will use the um to reconstruct the shape of yt, which is illustrated here, and we will obtain the reconstructed tensor rt. The Tucker decomposition is a high-order PCA or SVD. The UM extracts the eigenvectors of the nth dimension of HT. Each element in Z indicates the interaction degree of the eigenvectors of UM. This is actually also the degree of the implicit relationship. Now, let rho be the interaction degree. Then the ideal range for rho is from 0 to 1. If rho is larger than 1, then UM is overcomplete and have redundant information. If rho equals to zero, there will be no interaction between the eigenvectors. In the paper, we use LSTM to implement the TRN, and therefore, we have TLSTM. Although, it is obvious that the TLSTM uses less parameters than multiple individual LSTMs. However, 
The Tucker decomposition will introduce new parameters, the UM. It can be proven that TLSTM uses less parameters than multiple LSTMs if the following lemma satisfies. Where rho is the interaction degree we just introduced in the last slide, and d prime is the hidden dimension of LSTM or TLSTM, and d is the hidden dimension for h, and m is the dimension of the mth mode of h. Now let's move on to the experiments. We use a variety of real-world datasets to evaluate the proposed method including room monitoring, environmental monitoring, financial analysis, and traffic monitoring. The tasks are missing value recovery and future value prediction. We evaluate our model on the RMSE, the lower the better, and we pre-process the data by normalizing each time series by its z-scores. For both of the missing value recovery and future value prediction tasks, we use a wide range of ratios as test data and we would like to answer the following four questions in the experiment. Firstly, how accurate is net cubic for missing value recovery and the future value prediction? And how will the synergy improve the performance? How does the interaction degree rho impact the performance? And how efficient and scalable is net cubic? This slide shows the experimental results of a missing value recovery and future value prediction. The red arrows point to the net cubic, and the net cubic performs the best because it has the lowest RMSE. This slide shows the experimental results for the synergy analysis. We compare three different methods. The first one is the GCN with only one network. The second one is ITGCN, which is an independent version of the TGCN, which can also be seen as the multiple GCNs. The third one is the TGCN, the full model. The experimental results show that in general, TGCN performs the best. This slide shows the experimental results for the 20CR dataset. Again, the red arrows point to the full model net cubic, and the net cubic performs the best in general because it has the lowest RMSE. This is the visualization on the traffic dataset. The net cubic are the red curves, the ground truth are the black curves and all other baselines are the green and blue curves. In general, as can be indicated in the yellow circles, the net cubic performs the best because it is the closest to the ground truth. This is a sensitivity experiment. As rho increases, where rho is the interaction degree, the model performs better in general. This is because UM contains more eigenvectors as rho increases. The number of parameters of TM and LSTM also grows linearly with rho. This table shows the memory efficiency results. The first row is the dataset, the second row is the upper bound of a row in different datasets, and this row shows the values of row that we used in the experiments. The next two rows are the number of parameters of TLSTM and MLSTM respectively. The last row is the reduction ratio by comparing the number of parameters in TLSTM with the number of parameters in MLSTM. It can be concluded that TLSTM can significantly reduce the number of parameters than MLSTM. Although TLSTM reduces the number of parameters, it can actually achieve lower RMSE than the MLSTM, which can be shown in these two figures. This slide shows the scalability experiments of the proposed model. From these two figures, we can conclude that the training time is almost linear to the size of the input tensor, and the number of the parameters is also almost linear to the size of the input tensor. Now let me conclude this presentation. In this paper, we focus on modeling the co-evolving time series. We firstly propose a tensor graph convolutional network, to capture the explicit relationship. Then we propose a novel tensor recurrent neural network to model the implicit relationship. The experimental results show that our full model, net cubic, performs the best for missing value recovery and the future value prediction. And the TGCN captures the synergy among networks, and TRN reduces the number of parameters and performs better than the baselines. Thank you for your listening.